The Missouri River Bird Observatory is a small nonprofit organization. We're dedicated to the conservation of Missouri's birds and their habitats, and that sort of takes a variety of forms. We do a lot of research on both public and private property to kind of see how bird populations are doing and to assess the effects of different management practices on bird populations on those lands. We also do a lot of public education and outreach, a lot of work with kindergarten to 12th grade students as well as adults throughout the state. There's some core concepts that you really want to do to encourage people. You don't want to hit them over the head with the doom and gloom aspects of things. What we just want to do is foster appreciation for the natural world. And it's pretty easy to do when you can just point out some really amazing birds that are always right around. Like right now I hear a purple martin. So when you build and foster that appreciation, kids can make a better decision in the long run uh, how they want to, what they do in their lives and how they affect those things. In addition to engaging young minds, Dana and Ethan also spend much of their time surveying prairie, wetlands, and forest, gathering scientific data that both private and Missouri state agencies use to interpret the health of their wildlife habitats. Dana often says, it's pretty it's pretty simple what we do is do bird surveys, we count birds, but it's more than doing simple counts out there. So we do it in the most scientifically rigorous fashion that we possibly can and we do something that's called line transect distance sampling. Um, these are typically 400 meter long transects but they're laid out in a very systematic fashion so we have complete coverage of an area. We also do point counts, some people might know what point counts are where you stand in one point for a certain set amount of time and you count birds by sight and sound there. What we do is a little bit something unique and it's a new twist on it that nobody that we know of is doing this anywhere and we use a, a program on an iPad to collect spatially explicit uh, locations of each individual bird on aerial imagery. The whole time the iPad knows where we are and uh, so we know where we are on the map and we're able to accurately place all these birds in the area. So we're not only able to generate really robust statistics about the densities of these birds in there, but we can also relay it directly to what's on the ground at the time, maybe how management influences affect those locations of birds and the type of habitats that they're in. A lot of our landowners will be familiar with a few species, of course, but they don't even know how many species their land is supporting. And it's really exciting, it's one of the best things about the job, to go to a landowner and say, you not only have all these species of ducks, you have American bittern, you have prothonotary warbler, and you have all these different things that are wetland dependent birds. And so these lands are supporting so many more species than, than most people even know. So it's really nice to be able to share that. People often ask, uh, why do you do what you do? Because it's such a, it's such a niche. Uh, I think what that really boils down to is uh, our value systems and what we value and what we appreciate. I agree that it's about appreciation and I love many things about human life. Music is one big one, books, movies, things like that. But there are millions of other species on the planet and I like seeing those too. And as far as you know, getting up at four o'clock in the morning to be out on a site at you know, 5.15 or so, it's hard to get up sometimes, it really is, but once you're out there, there's just nothing like being out there at sunrise and hearing everything pipe up, birds, frogs, everything. And you never know what you're gonna see. You can see bobcat, you can see you know, all kinds of different things. So it's very peaceful and very happy. It's one way we can give back. It's something beyond ourselves. It's a, a pure and good thing, and it benefits not only wildlife, but it benefits people as well. The Pennytown Free Will Baptist Church, first constructed in 1926, is now the last remaining building on the 64 acres once known as Pennytown, the largest of Saline County's historic black hamlets. <laughs>